When you're working these problems, one of the most important things to remember is to keep working. You know, don't get stuck in the middle and think, oh, I can't go anywhere. Try an identity, try a rewrite, try a factorization, and keep working. And when you get to the end, double check to make sure that you did actually change this problem from in terms of theta to in terms of x. Okay, let's go ahead and look at another example. In this particular example, we are going to be looking at the integral of 1 over x squared square root of 25 minus x squared dx. Now this is not going to fit a nice u substitution. This does not fit a nice form that will integrate into like an antiderivative of inverse secant. So let's go ahead and try trig sub here. Because after all I do have this a squared minus u squared form. So I have an a squared minus u squared form. So this is 25 minus x squared a is 5, u is x. So the recommended substitution for a squared minus u squared is to let u equal a sine theta. So let's go ahead and do that substitution. We have u is x, so I get x is equal to a, which is 5 sine theta. So x is equal to 5 sine theta, dx is equal to 5, the derivative of sine theta is cosine of theta d theta. Now remember, one of the most common mistakes here is to forget this substitution, so let's make sure we keep it in there. Okay, because of the name trig sub, let's go ahead and sub. Well, x is 5 sine theta, this says to square it, so this is going to look like 5 sine theta quantity squared. Now underneath my radical, I'm going to have 25 minus x squared, but again, x is 5 sine theta quantity squared. One of the most important things to include here is this dx. So again, dx was equal to 5 cosine theta d theta. And we just simplify the heck out of it, and hopefully we get to a spot that's a little bit easier to work with. And again, from here we want to simplify. So first of all, I see that we could pull a 5 out of the numerator. I don't really want to make any substitutions yet because I'm not sure exactly what I'll need. So let's just go ahead and write everything out. In the denominator, I'll have 25 sine squared theta. And then underneath the radical, I'm going to have 25 minus 25 sine squared theta. In the numerator, I'll have cosine of theta d theta. And again, I want to try and simplify here. So I think I'll take this 25 and pull it out front as well. So I'll have 5 over 25 out front. In my numerator, I'm still left with this cosine of theta d theta. And then in the denominator, I factored out this 25. So now I'm going to be left with sine squared of theta here. And then underneath the radical sign, I can factor out a 25. So underneath the radical sign, I'll factor out a 25, and I'm left with 1 minus sine squared of theta. And again, the whole point here is just try and simplify, and it doesn't look like it's getting simpler, but it actually is. This 5 25ths reduces to 1 5th. Here I have the sine squared theta. Now I can factor out this rat root 25, this radical 25, and I'm left with 1 minus sine squared theta here, and you probably already see what's going to happen. In my numerator, I have a cosine of theta d theta, and I'm going to get some canceling to occur. So let's go ahead and keep rewriting here. The square root of 25 is 5, so I'm going to pull that out as 1 fifth, and of course I already have a 5 there, so I have 1 25th. Sine squared in my denominator. Now underneath this radical, I have 1 minus sine squared. Well, 1 minus sine squared for my Pythagorean identities is equal to cosine squared. And of course, I still am dragging along this cosine theta d theta in my numerator. So I have 1 25th integral. Sine squared theta, dragging that along. Now here, the square root of cosine squared is just cosine of theta. And then, of course, we see that some things will cancel here. So keep rewriting. 1 25th out front, the cosine thetas cancel, and I'm left with 1 over sine squared theta, d theta. 
Now you might try and look at this and think, okay, could I rewrite this somehow? Could I use a trig identity? But the easiest way to work this problem is to remember that 1 over sine squared is just cosecant squared of theta. And this is a nice antiderivative. If you'll recall from your derivatives, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, therefore the integral of secant squared is tangent. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared, therefore the integral of cosecant squared is equal to a negative cotangent of theta. And again, this is from your antiderivatives that you learned in Calc 1. And you might say, okay, that's my answer. It took a while to get there, but actually this isn't done yet. I need to convert this in terms of x. So I need to convert back to x. Well, let's see how we'll do that. In order to convert back, let's go ahead and look at what our original substitution was. Our original substitution was to let x equal 5 sine theta. So let's go ahead and use that information. x equal 5 sine theta. If we solve for sine theta here, I get sine theta is equal to x over 5. So Katoa, this is opposite over hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and check out a right triangle. Okay, here, on our last problem, we were looking for theta. Now we're looking for the cotangent of theta. So let's go ahead and mark an angle theta. Now, the sine of this angle theta will be opposite over hypotenuse. And then solving for the missing side using Pythagorean's theorem, we get this missing side to be root 25 minus x squared. So again, we're looking for negative 1 25th cotangent theta. Okay, so if we look at this, tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. So in this particular case, my adjacent leg would be root 25 minus x squared over my opposite leg, which would be x. So again, it's adjacent over opposite from angle theta plus c. And there is my solution. There's my integral. That's the integral of my original function. So if you look back, the original function was in terms of x. And now that I'm all down at the end, the solution is in terms of x as well. And again, these are fairly lengthy problems. You just need to stick with them. Remember your trig identities. Remember your substitutions. And remember to convert back, and they work out pretty slick.